Today, guys, we are in Evansville, Indiana at Brandeis Machinery, where they have the new Komatsu I, or an intelligent machines on display. And this is a question I've had for a while. Is there a place in my small excavating business for GPS? Is that a good investment or something I need to be investing in? And these guys do an awesome job of kind of walking me through it and explaining it. And my buddy Brett here actually owns a large excavating company, and we get his thoughts on the integrated versus what we'll call the bolt-on GPS. So let's, uh, let's get started. All right, guys, we're down here at Brandeis Equipment today, and I have Joe on hand, and you guys are showcasing the new intelligent equipment. Is this correct? Absolutely. All right, so I'm going to start this off. I got some random questions. So I come from the small excavating world. We do some farm work. We do some residential work. We do a lot of things. I have not found it to be necessary to me at this point to have GPS or, or an intelligent machine in my fleet to, to take that investment on. Right. I know the time's coming. You're very diverse in it. So I guess my question is to you, sell me on it. Like what's the advantage of it? Why should I be thinking about doing that? How's it gonna make me money, save me money, et cetera? Go on, I'm all ears, buddy. Well, let me ask you this ears. first. What's, what's your current positioning technology? How are you getting to where you need to be? I got these amazing eyes right <laughs> amazing here. Amazing I mean, eyes. These things are eagle eyes now. <laughs> Absolutely. And, uh, if, and then I double check myself with the old fashioned rotary laser. Rotary laser, great. And if you think about it, uh, I grew up in industry, my background is surveying. I used to do stuff at the dumpy level, tape measures, we did all that, um, but the technology makes us quicker, better, it right? Does, more efficient. It does, I mean, you, I just think about going from the, the laser level to the old transit. I mean, Correct. that was a huge, huge. jump right One man right can there. do the yeah. work now, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. So now you think about that, if it was a laser, it was a one-man job, you're still doing calculations, you have distance, you know, limitations. Um, you have height limitations with you the laser, You have inputs, right? which, which allows you to have errors. Absolutely, absolutely. And so where we've seen the uh, positioning technology being the GPS, GNSS, where we've seen a big benefit of that, especially um, any customers, if you're using a level, you're using site, you know, any types of technology, even if it's a tape measure, you can now get your 3D position, you can get grade, you can get horizontal distance, all these things. You can collect your own information and build your own site on the fly. So. I, that, that's my next question. I've always been under the impression if I'm going to use GPS on my job, I got to have somebody design me a model. I got to plug that into the machine, right. and then the machine knows what that site needs to look like in the end. It, so if I'm understanding you correctly, and please correct me if I'm wrong, you're telling me that I can take this machine kind of like what farmers do to an extent. Mm -hmm. I can use this machine to actually survey my site and then, then tell it I want to go down six inches or I want to cut or fill over here Absolutely. Uh, with a few inputs as an operator. Correct. And then this machine is now capable yeah. of knowing what I'm thinking. Absolutely. And that's, that's what a lot of people are misinformed. They think you have to have a design. Now, there are sites like that. If you're doing a civil site, an engineer site, you need that. And, and I want to I wanna, I wanna point out that I want to focus on the type of work I do. Absolutely. Uh, we're not doing heavy highway construction. We're not doing large construction or large commercial uh, site constructions, uh, some drainage projects, mm -hmm. uh, site builds, road builds, uh, driveway entrances, uh, maybe some subdivision work, some right. small scale stuff Absolutely. for a GPS application. And, and if you want to be more efficient, that's where we're helping guys out, anybody. So when I started getting in this field uh, about seven years ago, that was the people I talked to, like yourself. I saw the benefit for, for small contractors, guys just doing basic work that they can uh, make an investment. It is, it is an investment, but go in there and be able to compete and do more work, be more efficient. Um, so like your, your large agricult agricultural fields, if we're doing a lot of terraces, if you think in the past, you're working and building all these berms, you'd have multiple setups with a laser all over the place, whereas if you could take a GPS system out, set a single reference point, and go out and just build flat surfaces, get your terrace grade, you could cover now to, now to explain what he's talking about here a little bit, let's just say we're doing terraces up the hill and we're gaining 100 feet in elevation. Normally, within reason, you can work 16 feet at a time with a laser Correct. setup. So you're going to be setting up seven or eight times the work to the top of the hill. With an intelligent machine or with GPS, we're now using satellites to gauge that elevation. Yes. Yep. So there is no setup except with the exception of what you call the, the base station. The base station. Yep. So explain to me a little bit what a base station is. So a GPS base station or GNSS base station is basically a unit that's going to set at a fixed known location. Uh, it's collecting data from satellites, getting latitude, longitude, and ellipsoid height. And it's going to collect that, and then in turn, once we set, we call it calibration. Okay. Whether it's, uh, we'll typically use it with single point. We'll tell it, I want this coordinate to be whatever, be 0, 0, 0, 5,000, whatever. We'll set that lock down, we'll do a single point calibration, what we call it. 
And then now that base station will send out corrections uh, multiple different ways. We typically work with uh, a radio, a UHF radio. Okay. So we'll get radio corrections out, you know, one to two miles pretty consistently. And so if you think about that versus a laser, we can set it up, you can cover a lot of acreage in that manner. Um, so when it does that, any what we call a rover, which should be a bulldozer, a, a, a handheld unit, whatever, okay. is looking for those corrections, and these two are talking to each other. So if you think back to like how we used to do it with a transit or you know servers on an instrument, one person's so telling you're another get, person. You're getting the same information, you're just obtaining it a different way. Absolutely. So whenever I go to set up my laser system, it takes me longer to get it out of the truck than it does to put it on the tripod to use it. Correct. So how long does it take to set up this base station? So if we do a single point calibration, we're probably talking uh, maybe 15 minutes setup time and we're ready to go. So it's really not a whole lot longer than a laser um, just to get a simple sight going. And then depending on, like you said, how you want to use that, there's different ways we can manipulate data and, and just get something quick on the go. So let's talk just absolute base level, entry level. Let's just say, which I am, this is, we're not saying it, I'm the real deal here. I'm down here, I am interested in getting an intelligent machine, mm -hmm. going some GPS routes, so I've, from this conversation I need a base station, I need a, I need a machine that will right. receive let's that information. Yep. So let's take the cost of the machine out of it, but what, what's like entry level cost to, to start in on this system? Okay. So if you're, if you're getting into the GNSS base systems, they're, they're going to vary depending on your manufacturer. Um, they're going to range anywhere from you know, upper 20,000s, upwards of 50,000. Really depends on, the, on what you're getting and what you're looking for. Um, you can find very low cost units, but your accuracies aren't going to be as good as maybe more of a server grade or construction grade receiver. So it kind of varies. Um, typically the units we work with, we're in that yeah, mid 30s range. Okay. So have you seen people in my situation benefit from GPS absolutely, operation? Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, just because of the efficiency? Uh, yes, sir. I, I, one thing that comes to my mind a little bit is the is the bid process. Is I could possibly take something out there, I'm assuming, and survey a potential job, yep. and then I know where I need to get to from there, so I got a better idea of the yardage and, 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 and how far things need to be moved. And you're probably as well. I, I came from the civil engineering background. I did a lot of takeoffs. And so one of the things you're probably familiar with, there's a plan that says field verify. The plans may have been designed five, six years ago, and now you're bidding it. The conditions aren't the same. So what we see guys benefiting is going out prior to a bid, just doing a couple little work, doing some checks, and they can qual uh, quality control check those plans to make sure what they're bidding is not going to come back to bite them on later on. Well, Joe, I greatly appreciate your time and the information, but I see some beautiful paint running around here. I mean, can we get Absolutely. a demonstration on this? Absolutely. Let's get All to right, it. let's do it. Joe, we have turned Jeremy loose in the new 71i. We actually have a screen pulled up here. I don't know how well you guys will see it, but this is actually what he's seeing in the machine itself, right? Absolutely. So he has on his uh, control monitor the, the, the grade, the depth, and everything he's going to set up. So ideally, what we're going to do, um, these machines are using the GNSS technology to get its position. Jeremy set it up to... So explain real quick what that is. So GNSS is just a global navigation satellite system. Well, okay. So basically it uses a set of satellites. Correct. Now, one thing I want to point out real quick on these GPS machines, I'm accustomed to seeing the poles Absolutely. up on the blades. Absolutely. And these are nice, clean. I see a globe on top and that's about it. Absolutely. So what, what Comanche did, they, they polled a lot of customers and said, hey, do you want that stuff on the blade? Are you going to move technology off the machines? And they said, most customers said, no, we're not. So they integrated the technology in for, for multiple reasons. One, for the ease of going with the machine. The other, when you've got the mass out, whatever the manufacturer is out there, someone's got to climb up. So for one, that's a safety you know, uh, issue there. Someone climbing up on the blade if it's wet. The other thing is cables out to the front of the blade tend to get broke. So a lot of manufacturers are moving away from that. So they integrated it, did that, and were able to make a very smooth operating machine with integrating the sensors in. Okay, so what he's demonstrating here, and uh, correct me if I'm wrong, did he just make a survey pass? He did. So this machine is tracking the ground as it moves. And so then what he did, he told the machine, I want to do a, a, a cut of around six inches relative to what I just drove over. So now this machine's going to go through and make a cut relative to about six inches of depth as he goes. Now one thing that's neat, we call these intelligent machines because as that machine's going and it feels, hey, I'm going to slip, it'll gently rise and carry so that So I think that, that brings up another good point. One difference between an integrated machine and a, a bolt-on system is we're not just operating the blade here. The, the, the tracks or the tractor and the blade are communicating with each other. Absolutely. Conventionally, you would just be operating the elevation of the blade and that's pretty much Absolutely. it. Absolutely. So on, on conventional systems, the technology is it's reporting back to control box. It's sending corrections to the valve system and just controlling grade. So if you're sitting still and it's at grade, that dozer will pick the front of that machine up because it's trying to grade and it can't go anywhere. 
these intelligent machines are mapping and knowing. So instead of just sitting there and it trying to drive to China, it's going to sit there and go and it's going to say, hey, I can't go any further and just carry the grade. So it's assisting you as it goes. Which also improves on machine wear, efficiency, and everything Absolutely. else. Absolutely. So explain to us, hopefully we can see this a little bit here. Uh, this is the number he's cutting over here. Is that correct? Right. He's got a cut of minus one foot. And so for the model he's kind of running, he's showing cut of, uh, well, the blade's in the air. Uh, right now he's saying he's got three foot of cut, but his blade is in the air. Okay. As he backs up and puts it down, that cut will go lower to grade there. So as, as he lowers the blade, that, that number should go down. Absolutely. So as we see him pull forward there. There he dropped the blade. So, and it could be our internet, give it a second there. <laughs> Go figure, my internet froze up. There we go. <laughs> there went, so there he's went. got about six tenths of cut right there. So that machine's gonna try to drive down and do as much as you can. Now, if you pan up, you can see he's loading yeah. that blade. Uh, as he come up, as he hit a hard spot and the blade got full and the tractor couldn't push no more, he started gaining elevation right there. Absolutely. But what it's gonna do, it's gonna try to carry a consistent, smooth path so when he backs up, he's not backing over wind rolls and, and rough spots. Oh man, you're missing out on all the fun of a rookie operator <laughs> Absolutely, right there. absolutely. Well, as, in today's world, that's what we don't have enough experienced operators. So they develop technology to help us train people quicker and make them more efficient. Now, I will say this. It, it does help a less experienced operator operate, but there still is advantage to this with an experienced operator. Absolutely. In the less wear and tear on him. He knows where he's at. Less less fatigue on the operators. And going back to the safety aspect of it, we got less people out here running around the job site checking oh, strings, checking elevations, busting hubs, which is what they used to do back in the day. Absolutely. Uh, so that, yeah, a that's... typical grading operation, if someone is laying out a grid with survey stakes, you may have one to two guys pulling string out there checking and your operator is kind of limited by what those guys can check. Nowadays one gentleman can go out or one woman can go out and push this, be more efficient. And not only that, because it is G GNSS and know where they're at, they can move dirt to the proper locations, not be moving it multiple times because they put it in the wrong location. So. One thing I've got to learn here today, and one thing I want to stress just a little bit, is to run this equipment, you don't have to hire somebody to build you a 3D G GPS no. model. You can take this machine, run it on your job site, survey the property yourself, or survey the job yourself, and then decide what you want to do as far as cut or minus. And, and this is the same screen he's seeing inside again. You guys can see he's getting really close to grade there. Our internet's lagging behind just a little bit. Now, once that number goes to all zeros, that machine will continue to hold gray, right. correct? Absolutely, yep, yep. All right, sir, I got one question left. Absolutely. It's killing me not running that machine. Can I Let's have, do like, it. Can I have like machine. one try at it? All right, sir, we have hopped up in the cab. I see a key, after that I'm lost. Okay, absolutely. <laughs> so in this Komatsu machine, um, they've really integrated some new safety features. Um, some of the biggest things, we're gonna turn the key on for a second, all right. is operator presence. And so, as we turn the key on and the, and the monitor boots up, um, it's going to go up and show that, you know, there's somebody in the seat. Now, if you would lift yourself up a little bit, get off the seat, just like our mowers kind of do, it says you're not in the gotcha. seat. So, they really have created some more safety features. So, it knows whether I'm here or not. Absolutely. And again, Komatsu is big on safety and really making a, a good environment for the operator to run in. Uh, some other features is we used to have lock levers on these 70, on the yeah, machines down I'm low. Yeah, I'm familiar with those on the other ones. And so, right. they've switched these to a toggle, um, another feature that the customers really like. Um, and again, just making the whole uh, cab very viewable. If you sit back and look, you can really see the corners of the blade yeah, very well. Yeah, it's incredible. I can actually see all the way across the top of the blade and the other corner over there, and the visibility is just amazing. One, one other feature, which a lot of guys don't really think about, but the back of the blade, the taper, the angle from the blade up, they, they reduce that so that you can actually see the bottom of the blade more when you're working. So it really gives you a good view of what you're doing, even if you're working in manual mode, not in a GNSS mode or an automatic mode. So, to start the system, we have to have everything locked in. We're gonna start the system up. Um, with these machines, we typically recommend start the system up and then turn our, our GNSS on. Okay. So if you'd start the system up and then we'll power up our, our GNSS. Crank her up. Absolutely. So this is all the controls for the machine itself. We got some customizable features there, uh, whether it's our power modes, our track style mode. This is a full hydrostat machine, but we can also simulate a direct drive, you know, gear shift mode if we want it. Okay. Uh, we've got a blade speed control. So if you're gonna run in a manual where you're not using automatic controls, you can you can set a setting to control how fast your lever work. We typically set it to the fastest setting. Most people want all and everything, everything there. Got, we right. can slow it down there. 
Um, blade drop, we have a blade drop mode. We, we, we can call set that, that. Uh, rookie mode. And yeah, rookie mode. mode. When you got somebody don't want to tear them up, we put them in that mode. Uh, but just some of the different features there. Um, on your dials, you're going to have your standard, what most machines have, fuel, hours, oil pressures, and so on and so forth. Now, um, um, real quick, how many horses is this tractor and what's it weigh? This machine is net 237, and the weight is roughly right around 51,000 pounds. Okay. Uh, the blade is right at about 13 foot wide. I think this standard link is a 30 inch pad, so um, pr pretty good sized machine. Gotcha. So the power on our control box, we're going to simply press this button until she lights up, and then she's going to boot up. It takes roughly about a minute or so to boot this system up. We really recommend, because this is an integrated machine, this um, our, our technology that's working through and controlling our, our machine control um, needs to have all the other sensors going before we power it up. This works better that way. So once it boots up, it'll come on and it'll go right into its um, uh, automatic control features where you can go look at your screen and everything else. So this is just a Windows compact device. You can see there's other software on there. One thing that I, I really like about this machinery that we do with Komatsu is we have remote support. And so for new operators or new folks, we can log into this machine remotely, as we were showing earlier, right. and support them, train them, Which that's what we were doing with your, uh, that's what we were doing with your Surface Pro tablet. Absolutely. We were actually and it's, monitoring what he was doing as the Absolutely. Operator. So as the system comes on, one of the things they say is they want you to uh, basically put the blade to certain positions. This is just a reset to check these, these sensors. Now, on the Komatsu machines, what they did, instead of the technology being out there or sensors and wires, they use a, a, a roll caliper type technology, which is measuring the stroke of our sensors. That's how it gets this angle, tilt, and lift for the machine. Okay. So as you turn it on, it's saying, hey, we want to calibrate these. We want to check that calibration. So what you would do is on the, on the right-hand side, that's your blade lever control. Unlock it. Yep. And then what you're going to do is just pull back and lift and hold it for a few seconds. And then it'll change to a tilt. So we're going to max it out, hold it, and... and uh, uh, Look how high that blade is. Yep. Now go to uh, your left and tilt it. To the left? I'll yeah. Well, way. Either way, but I always go left and hold it. Just hold it and uh, go ahead and hold it to that position. Go back right for a second and come back. Now come back left. Okay. Now the blade angle. The blade angle on the Komatsu machine is a thumb lever. You roll it, just roll it to your left and hold it. Or right, either way works fine. Go ahead and roll it back to your right. If it doesn't go one way, always go the other. What this does is recheck and uh, check the sensor itself. Okay, so now it's cleared out. That's, again, anytime we key off, it's just a check and make sure nothing's got out of whack. So is that a that's a process that you'd have to go through every time you shut down and fire it back up? Yeah, absolutely. And, and a lot of times you can do all three at one time. Okay. I like to kind of take people through and show them, but most guys have done it for a while. You can hold so all so three you can positions. Bump all, bump all three stops. Yeah, and, and most guys do that as they're driving over to where they're going to work. Okay, so you can uh, do that on the move. Absolutely, gotcha. absolutely. You don't have to be sitting still. Um, one other thing about our machines, again, they built this automatic system to run all the time. So even if you've got you know a little cut or massive cut, you turn auto on. So if you wanted to hit the auto button on the Komatsu machines, it's right in the middle of your index finger on the, on the control lever, right, right down uh, right down here. Oh, way right down yeah. there. Yeah. So it's right kind of like a trigger. There. Gotcha. Yeah. So All if you right. hit it, auto comes on, but you're in control. They build in a safety feature. It's not going to work until you start moving and engage the lever. Okay. So you can have the blade like this, hit autos and start moving, and that blade takes over and starts running. Gotcha. So so very cool there. But if you want to take off and play with that a little bit, I'll, I'll hop off. You stay on it like this. I want you to see that, or it'll actually take off and go. Gotcha. Oh, we got her. Uh, throttle, that's the most important yes, thing. Yes, sir. Right here? Oh, yes. Yep. Yeah, so uh, because we started so much, this turns it up. This is your D idle and brake, and this is your lock lever for your um, drive control. Um, again, being a hydrostat, you can bump your speeds up or down, yep. increment, hold it, reverse and forward, turn left and right. So, make sense? Yeah, we're off, man. Awesome, have fun. All right, guys, let's give this thing a go and see what we got. So, I'm gonna click the auto mode, which comes on right there, and in theory, I don't know how much dirt we're gonna push, but that thing should run the blade by itself. Whoop, don't have the door shut on, man. Let me do that. There we go.
Yeah, so as it starts loading up the blade, I'm not doing anything. It's automatically adjusting that and carrying me on forward. That's pretty slick. That's pretty cool. That, that is a very simple system. I mean, this is my first real exposure to GPS. I'm not touching anything. This machine's just pushing away. I think the only thing important I need to do is stop before I go over the end of the hill here. All right. I'm going to sit you guys up here. I'm going to play for a second. As you guys watch Brett and I operate here, I'm just going to kind of talk about my takeaways from the day and kind of my thoughts on it. I was trying to demonstrate with the dozer here. They were talking about on these Komatsu machines how the outer track actually speeds up instead of the inner track slowing down, which makes it push more efficiently through a turn. And I could tell a difference. It's hard to tell on this little closed circuit track here uh, exactly what advantages or disadvantages would be to that. But it does make a difference on how the machinery acts. But back to the GPS real quick. Uh, a few things. One I took away is is I think a GPS setup for my operation is way more feasible than I originally thought it might be and I do see several advantages to it that I didn't see previously in places it would help me. There's a lot of situations where I see it could be useful everything from installing lifts on a pond dam to a building pad uh, to installing you know an exact six, six inches of stone on a driveway uh, straight line and lines and slopes and, and stuff like that. Um, huge 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 advantages of that uh one of the biggest things that i took away to where i could possibly see it being advantage is uh you know jerry especially and myself we can pretty much go out and buzz off a pad or run a slope into a grade to a pretty tight tolerance but it's taken years and years and years of experience to do that uh captain cleman aaron man behind the scenes and uh and matt they they are not to the point they don't have the experience to do that it would take me years possibly to train them to do that but i think in a matter of a couple of weeks i could train them to how to run this monitor to where they could do equal quality work in certain situations as what a much more experienced operator like myself or jerry could possibly do and that's probably the the biggest advantage i see to it right off the bat and it also eliminates people on the ground you could do, you can do more with less uh, which is an advantage, uh, you know, to overhead and a whole lot of different things. So a lot of pros to it. I can definitely see myself moving in this direction in the future. I think it's going to be kind of a, a baby step scenario. Uh, you know, there are some cons to it, and, and the big one is the cost. And I feel like in a small operation like myself, uh, it's gonna. The margins aren't there. I'm not gonna regroup that or regain that cost as fast as what uh, my friend Brett would on, on some of these bigger heavy highway jobs. So I, I, I think it's a trend that we're gonna end up following in the future. I just don't know if we're quite there yet. I do like these integrated machines. I see a bunch of huge advantages of that. One just being you got one dealer that supports everything. You're not chasing an aftermarket dealer on a factory machine, and it's just a much nicer, clean cleaner install so uh, one thing I want to do before we leave here is Brett that's with me he him and his uh, family actually own a very large excavating company they've been running GPS for years I think since 2006 or 7 and I'm just kind of curious on his thoughts and the thoughts of an integrated machine versus a bolt-on machine all right guys that was absolutely awesome giving that thing a try I got my buddy Brett here how long have we known each other buddy too long <laughs> I've known him since he was I think I knew you before you were born is that possible <laughs> probably Lifelong friends, I promise. But what I wanted to bring him in for is you actually own, with your family members, a very large excavating company. You guys have been running GPS for years. Yeah, we started running GPS on equipment in 2007. And you and pretty much use it on a daily basis, correct? Yeah, we've got it on graders with robotic guns. We got a scraper set up, D8s, D9s, uh, finished dozers. Excavate, so, one excavator. So my question is for you, I got two questions for you. One is, can you see GPS being beneficial to a small guy like me? Yeah, uh, I don't know if it would be practical for somebody to go out and buy a brand new system, but if a guy could go out and buy something off the rental fleet, then and, and, the and price is into it. Uh, and, and, yeah. and after today, honestly, after seeing it today, I can see where I could integrate it a lot easier than what I could before. My second question is for you, is most of the GPS you're running now is not considered integrated. It's bolt-on stuff. Correct. 
Um, do you see the advantages of having these machines integrated like Amatsu's done here? Yeah, at first, you know, anything new, you're a little skeptical, but now that I've looked at it, you don't have the mask on the blade, you don't have the antennas hanging on I there. I mean, personally for me, I mean, I do a lot of different work. Like, I don't have a dozer set up just for finish grading. You know, that dozer may be finish grading one day and clearing, clearing the, next. the next. Yeah. You know, that's a huge deal not having that on there and i don't know how many times you're working around houses and underneath porches and stuff you know that's something else you got to watch versus something like this which is the clean setup yeah so. and massless is nice you don't have to worry about tree limbs or buildings well, and all the cables yeah cables going cables back, are so. six seven hundred dollars a pop i just want to say a huge thanks to everybody here at brandeis machinery for allowing us to do this uh, this was kind of a thing that you just called me on a whim we come down here i thought what the heck we'll try it out beautiful day beautiful equipment everybody here was super nice and allowed us to film Hope you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. And as always, guys, we'll catch you on the next one. Tell them bye, Lutry. Have a good weekend, everybody.